What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we'll be taking a look at a title called New Cycle. This game rests firmly in between a couple of different video game touchstones. It's somewhere in between like Banished and Frostpunk. I know, name two more referenced games that exist out there in the world of Colony Survival City Building. Uh, but this is a post-apocalyptic game where the sun got big angry and decided to destroy humanity. And now we are rebuilding after a solar flare. This demo is actively available right now. You can go play it for yourself. I've played the demo for about an hour or an hour and a half or so prior to the recording of this video just to kind of familiarize myself, figure out the mechanics so that I can explain them properly along the way, and then also give some of my thoughts about the game. I haven't seen anything with it so far that has been like egregiously out of alignment. There's like some little UI things that I think could be a little bit clearer, but by and large, it is a banished Frostpunk style game. You build a settlement, people have problems, you gotta make decisions. Those decisions will have outcomes on the long-term survival of your people. And so anyways, let's dive on in. If after watching this video, you wanted to play the demo for yourself, it is down below in the description like I always do. And then you'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream in case you wanted to hang out live. Let's go ahead and start off a new game. As of right now, there is only the sandbox mode available for perusal in this demo. And there's only the meadow map. The meadow map gives us a big morale boost at the start of spring. That's really, really good because managing morale in this game is kind of a big deal, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So here is our little settlement. Uh, so we've got a message from our community. Let's resolve that. Basically, they're going to tell us that, like, there was a solar flare, humanity fell apart, everything is terrible, we now live inside of rust barns. Uh, I don't really need a tutorial. I pretty much know what I'm doing at this point. The game does have push pause. You can push pause the game, but you're not allowed to interact with any of the UI elements, uh, open any menus, build any buildings, plan anything out while you're paused. This is strictly a utilitarian push pause, just in case you got to go to the bathroom or something else like that. Time in this game passes very, very quickly, as you can see. And so let's talk about the UI while we have the game paused. Up top, we've got all of our resources, the most important of which are going to be water and meals. Aside from that, you've got your population panels down here. Basically, everybody is set up in like a caste system in this game. There are workers, there are craftsmen, and there are leaders. And all three of them need different things, and all three of them have their morale kind of tracked differently, depending on what you're doing, what you're providing, and what you're able to do when you resolve events. Some things you do are going to make the common folk happy, some things you do are going to make the nobles happy, so on and so forth, interjecting like a little bit of conflict into the overall emergent narrative of the game. For right now, we've got to do a basic setup because all of our people are homeless. They don't really have a whole lot going on. So for right now, what I'd like to do is we need a field camp. That'll go and get us wood and it will also get us stone and iron later on. So we'll go ahead and plop that on down. The other thing that we're going to need is a gathering camp. I think the best spot for gathering is probably going to be right here. The game does utilize roads. It seems to be about 50-50 right now. I've played the game for a little while. Some buildings do not require adjacency to a road, and some do. And so this game seems to be striking kind of like a middle ground between games that are all about, like, planning where you want to put your roads and, like, where you want to put your buildings. Uh, versus games where you can just kind of like build willy-nilly and the transit system doesn't really matter that much. We're also going to need a well because people need water to drink. Otherwise, they end up like a sucked out husk like that guy in the mummy that got his eyes and his tongue pulled out and then they just like drain him dry into like a dust mummy. We also need a lumber mill so that we can start processing logs into planks because you can't really build anything in this game with logs. I think there's like one research you can do and we actually don't have it just yet. This game does have research trees. It also has eras, so I guess there's kind of like a little bit of like an anno feeling in there as well. Like, as you provide people with things, you kind of advance through a timeline, and you go from these people that are effectively hunter-gatherers on up to kind of like a brass art deco, uh, I guess, uh, steampunk sort of vibe that goes along as the game continues. But for right now, we need to assign some workers. So I'm going to send some people out to get logs, I'm going to send some people out to get rocks. Uh, we could put three workers on each of these. We have like 35, so we're not really hurting for manpower right now. One thing to be aware of, though, is that morale affects the quality of work that people do in this game by, like, huge, pivotal amounts. So if we go to this menu right here, you can actually check and see what everybody's morale is. On this little morale wheel, uh, the higher up they are, they, they like... You get massive production bonuses and penalties depending on where their morale is at. For right now, it's slowly creeping upwards. We've got a plus 40 because the game starts out in spring on the meadow map. 
Uh, but as we provide them with houses and as we provide them with shelter and things of that nature, it should creep slowly higher and our production outputs should get better. Uh, this is very much one of those games that's all about planning your economy and making sure that like you've got all the things you need in order to get by. A couple more buildings are now done. I'm going to assign some people to start manufacturing planks. So there you go. We're planking like it's 2007. Over on this side, we've got a gathering camp. That's going to get us some mushrooms and some raw materials so that we can start making soup kitchens and manufacturing food. We'll want to kind of get on that about as soon as possible if we can manage it. And in fact, I don't remember. Let's see here. We've got the establishment, which we started out with, uh, and we've got basic construction over here. So yeah, we're going to want to pick up basic construction about as soon as possible. So I'll just dump the resources now. It's important to note that at any time, you can take a look at your roster of items up here at the top, and it'll tell you precisely what your inputs and your outputs are. Those are going to waffle back and forth based on the morale of your colony. And so don't just look at it once and be like, okay, I am statically producing 18 wood and I'm statically consuming 12 wood. I'm good to go for the foreseeable future. Uh, no, nay, never, not at all. Uh, you actually want to check in on these things pretty frequently because with morale shifts and things kind of like moving around on you, you can end up actually underproducing and overproducing and things like that very, very quickly. The well needs to be attached to a road in order to function, so I'll go ahead and run that down over to there. The map does have overlays that you can take a look at, like where is there water, where is there wind, uh, where can I go mining at, like which areas have the best fertilities for farming. I don't think the fertility layer is quite in in this demo right now. We'll go back to the default layer real quick. And it looks like we've got our soup kitchen, our stockpile, and our simple meals done. Good. Uh, where was that wind power at? The wind power is kind of like right there. Okay. I think what I'd like to do then... Oh my god, there we go. Click the default layer, bro. You could do it. I believe in you. Uh, we are going to fill up our stockpile pretty quickly. And so I think building another one is a really, really good idea. We'll kind of put it back in over there. I'm trying not to use the, the wind tiles because I want to put down power grid over there. We're producing 200 kilowatts just from our central building and this little windmill right here, but we're going to need more once we start getting out and into the future. We have a little bit of wood, so I would say to run a dusty road on over there just so people can move along it. There is activity and kind of animation and vibrancy in this game. The little characters do have animations. They carry things. Some guys have logs. Some guys are carrying crates. This guy right here apparently bit off more than he can chew, and he's going to have a sore back tomorrow. But hey, sometimes you got to make those decisions. Like, you know, in life, you got to decide if you're like the kind of person that brings everything in from the grocery store from the trunk of the car in one trip staggering with your legs shaking or are you the kind of person that makes like three trips you know what I mean one of them has honor and dignity the other takes a really really long amount of time and so the stockpile should be complete that's going to increase our storage caps for pretty much every single resource it's not crazy relevant right now but about 10 minutes from now we're going to fill up our stockpile and we're going to be really, really upset if we don't have more storage because basically our entire economy is going to grind to a halt. Next thing we need is a soup kitchen. I don't know where I want to put the soup kitchen. Suppose I could put it right there. That's all right. That's a decent spot. We'll run another little road over here too. I don't know why. I always build things in grid squares. I think it's because I'm from the United States and everything here is built using kind of like a geographical tracking method called uh, township and range, basically, uh, which is like subdivided, sub-subdivided, and like triple subdivided squares. That's why everything in the United States is shaped like a square. Makes city planning really, really, really simple. And like who owns what and what property goes to where. So if you ever wondered why everything in the United States is a square grid, that's why uh, all of the geography is plotted and planned by a system called township and range, which is basically just concentric squares that just keep subdividing and getting smaller. You have to learn the notation when you're a geologist for land surveys and stuff like that. That's the only reason why I'm aware of that is because they forced me to spend about six months learning how to do it and how to tell somebody that, like, in the top right corner of the top right corner of the bottom right corner of the utmost square, there is a small grid, like, basically, it's got, like, a notational style to it that takes a little while to learn. It takes some practice, but once you, it's not, like, super intuitive, but once you get it, you get it.
So on the glorious day of Ocho, we have finished off our soup kitchen. Let's go ahead and get people fed. We'll make some mushroom stew for right now. And we'll just have a couple people work inside the cookhouse. We need to take a look at our technology tree and figure out what we need to do next. As far as community goes, I want to be able to build houses, but we need 385 knowledge in order to do that. Your knowledge is tracked right here. It's these little books, so it's kind of like the knowledge in this game. You don't have a research building or anything. Instead, it's called community knowledge, which conceptualizes the idea that everybody here is working together and they're all kind of doing similar jobs. And they're all realizing that there's inefficiencies and like ways that things can be done better. And they're all kind of like checking each other's work and learning from one another. And so every single time the clock rolls over at midnight, you get an amount of community knowledge that's equal to your population, basically. Uh, so you don't need to have like a big science building or anything to move your research track along. For now, I'm going to stockpile a few more lumbers because actually lumber is produced pretty slowly. At some point, we're probably going to need a secondary source of this. As I've been playing the game, I haven't noticed any trees falling down or anything, so I don't know if deforestation is actually a thing in this game. However, you do use up, like, the mushrooms. You see how this right here is, like, slowly the border is going away? You can use up, like, forageables, but they come back next year. And so anyways, I don't know if a similar thing happens with trees. I don't see the border going away, so like I doubt it, but it's kind of hard to say. As it stands right now, there are some jaggies with the graphics. That's the first thing that I noticed. Uh, when I piled on in, I tried to take a look if there was any type of anti-aliasing or any kind of anisotropy that I could enable in order to kind of like smooth out textures and smooth out the jaggies of the grass or like smooth out some of the rougher edges along the buildings and whatnot. It uh, doesn't appear to be a thing as of right now. Hopefully that'll get added later on in further development. For right now, this is kind of just a play test. Let's go ahead and research Oath. That's going to allow us to build houses, which should bring our morale up ever so slightly. And then, of course, we need to name our camp. And so I'm going to name it Buddingtonshire. There we go. That's a no one would ever dare mess with the great and powerful Imperium of Buddingtonshire. All right, so where's my research at? They're starting it off. I can't really do anything until that research is done. So we're just going to chillax for a minute. Our production does not look great on, like, food and other sundries, but it'll get better once we bring morale up. So we've got a couple of houses over here. The houses don't diversify, in case you were wondering if that was a thing. So I tend to, like, rotate them a little bit each time that I place one. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Hold on. There's a quest. So in a couple days, they're going to ask us to build houses for a quest, and if we don't do it, it's going to upset everybody. But it doesn't retroactively check to see if you built houses. And so this happened to me the last time I played the game. I stamped out enough houses for my entire population. Then I got that quest, so I needed to disassemble all my buildings and then rebuild all my buildings. And the process of disassembling and reassembling, the timer was pretty tight on the community expectation, and so unfortunately it just didn't work out, and I ended up getting like a fat morale penalty for like the next four or five days that like messed up my economy. So maybe I will wait until that quest comes through. There we go. I knew it would come up. All right, every one of us needs proper places to live. We have food and water, but sleeping in whatever nooks we can find every night is not preparing us for the day's labor. Build three shacks. There you go. I knew that it would come up. I knew. Uh, so let's go ahead and we will stamp out the shacks. If you're wondering what I mean by the game does not have uh, differentiated graphics for the buildings, basically with a lot of city builders, what you'll find is nowadays uh, they've designed the buildings to be somewhat modular and then they plug that in to sort of like a procedural thing that the game has going on. Oh, it looks like it counted one of the shacks. Huh, maybe they fixed it in between today and yesterday. I don't know. Uh, but anyways... The proceduralism moves the parts around on the houses, which makes them look a little bit random. And it makes your urban sprawl look a little bit better, in my opinion. We got five days to get it done. Building a house, it's a bunch of fun. No, it's not. Framing and working on houses is the worst. I used to be in construction. It was booty cheeks. It was the worst. I was a roofer. It was awful. All right, so though it was hard, we excelled. It is a happy day for our house, and we are slowly leaving uncertainty behind. People are encouraged by success. If we can keep on like this, we may meet positive outcomes beyond what we expected. There you go. I don't think we got a positive. If our society got a buff or anything, it would be up there in the corner. 
And so I think we just avoided a negative rather than getting a positive. I got to wait for some more planks to get made. Uh, we used them all up on these houses, unfortunately. And so until we get some more planks, there's not going to be much we can do. But inside of here, I think the next thing we kind of have to take is metalworking. Yeah, but we need 13 planks for that, so we're going to have to wait for all of our housing construction and whatnot to be done. Every single house houses four people. All these buildings are upgradable, by the way, in case you didn't know. Uh, you can upgrade the facilities. You can make the houses nicer. You can make them clank a little bit harder. For these buildings over here, it increases the production output and makes them a little bit more consistently, a um, little bit more consistent with regards to their outputs, or it allows you to add more workers. Stuff like that. Let's go ahead and start the, the metalworking tree here. There we go. And so this is going to be our first production chain, and this is going to be the method by which uh, we can gather iron. We are going to convert it into ingots, and then from there we can take the ingots and we can make tools and we can make wire and we can make gears and things like that that are going to allow us to get further on down the research tree. For right now, let's just go ahead and fast forward it until the research is done because... We're sort of stopgapped until we get metal working. That's also going to give us a nice little opportunity to stockpile a few more planks, too, because we're a little bit low on that front. All right, so with production, what do we need? Well, the first thing we need to do is inside the gatherer hut, we need to assign, like, I don't know, like two people to go and get iron, I guess. We're not going to need, they gather iron at, like, an absurdly fast rate. And so, oh, we've got immigrants. Nice. A uh, flock of refugees have arrived near the edge of the settlement. Yeah, sure. We will accept them. Welcome on in. They must take the oath of citizenship. Our enemies are now their enemies, and we will stab them with spears. Uh, let's see. We've got a forge over here. I would recommend building maybe two of these uh, because the process of ingotizing takes way, way too long uh, compared to the iron output that you tend to get. I'm also going to kind of like run roads around over here just to keep things a little bit more organized. There we go. All right, so roads have been run, and as you can see, construction is underway. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a blacksmithy, and we're also going to need another house, unfortunately. So let's go ahead, and we will slap in another home right there, another little L-shaped bend, and we're going to have to wait for lumber to come back in before too long. You can tell that you have homeless because these little shanties show up all over the place with people just like idling around them. And so that should give us five houses. And this house, I think, is not working because it's not connected to a road network. There we go. And so now everybody should have a house. All of our forges are done. So let's go ahead and we will mash out three workers there. And we will mash out three workers there. And that should give us a little bit of production output. It's not going to be an enormous amount. But it should allow us to begin the production of tools, I would think. Our food supply seems to be growing. That's really, really good. In fact, we're operating at a surplus right now, so we're gaining seven food uh, per day. That's great, because the game does have a seasonal system. And once we get to the winter season, uh, things are going to kind of dry up on us. Oh, I was hoping that that would be the right size that I could smoosh it in right there i wanted to give it to smoosh all right well we'll put this over here then that has like benefits it gets rid of the ugly shanty hut that was over there and forces the guy to move into a house and on top of that it allows us to make metal tools uh, because tools are actually a really really important consumable in this game uh, so basically every single day your various classes uh, they will require a certain amount of tools depending on their job in order to get things done. And if they don't have those tools, they will still do the job, but there's a chance every single day that there will be like a workplace accident uh, that will basically cause issues for you and yours. And so keeping people supplied with tools is a really, really good idea. Uh, what's this say? We need stability. Chief, it seems like we've been able to set things right since settling on down. Our small settlement built toiling day and night now needs security and stability. We should at least make sure that we have left our days of hunger and thirst behind. Meet the food and water demands of the entire population for three days on regular distribution. Yeah, so this is one of those things that it took me a little bit to find. Uh, so if you go to the population menu, you can pick each of your social classes and you can decide how much each of these social classes are allowed to eat per day. And so we actually need to set that up so that everybody's kind of like eating and drinking the stuff that they need in order to be happy. They give you one day worth of leeway here before basically you need to set it up. 
Um, do that. Do that quickly. I find that a lot of the thresholds in this game are very, very slim for, like, the amount of time you have to kind of, like, react to it. Our tool supply is bad, but we're going to start producing tools over here. We are producing 12 iron ingots a day, and we are consuming four. Uh, we are producing... It's not going to count the... the it's not going to count the consumption just yet, but it will. And it looks like we're getting credit right now. Uh, we are consuming huge amounts of food right now, so I'm going to have to disable that, I think. Once we... Well, our production output will get better because morale has gone up by, like, two tiers. However, they are eating a lot of food. And they are, in fact, drinking a lot of water. So I think we're going to need a secondary cookhouse. And I think we're going to need a secondary well as well if we want this to work. So let's get another soup kitchen rocking. Just to make sure that we stay on top of that. I think we can wait on the well. Well, we're losing 50 a day. Maybe not. Maybe we don't want to wait on the well. Maybe we want to get the well done like now. Uh, our objective is done. Did we get a buff? We've overcome the trial. It is a source of joy for everyone. Yeah, well, you know. I enjoyed Doritos as much as the next guy, and having a nice steady supply of them is really kind of the hallmark of culture. Uh, let's see here. We've got another well, but we don't have any water available until we get back to kind of like in the mountains over there. I believe that this is already being exploited by that well. Yeah, so it looks like each patch, you can only really... plop one thing down. Yeah, there's nothing here that, like, I want to spend the resources to get after. I wonder if there's like mining nodes or something right there. Maybe there's like specialized water nodes later on, like big old mechanical pumps or something that get down into the aquifer. I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and we will get our food up a little bit higher. Morale is looking really good right now. Unfortunately, morale is going to have to take a little bit of a hit uh, because I've got to turn down the water. So how much are we producing right now? We are producing... It's hard to say. We're not producing 15. It's definitely more than 15 that we're producing. 120 a day is what we are currently producing. So we should be able to take their water consumption down by one tier. So there we go. We'll put them on medium distribution. That doesn't hurt our morale that badly. Our efficiency is kind of at like... 65 right now so they're at like 65 percent of their maximum output through all buildings uh, we are producing tools right now which is really really good uh, it looks like we have a surplus of six at the moment so four tools a day and we are producing like what 23 a day so we could probably turn up their tool usage a little bit but be forewarned uh, the tools are also a research material that you need to use. And so we'll bump them up to medium tool usage real fast just to kind of make up the difference on the lack of water uh, that people have around. I know that you're looking for a cool, refreshing drink of water, but can I interest you in this ball-peen hammer instead? Works every time, man. Works every time. Uh, so it looks like inside this menu we can get the electrical grid. On this side we can get hunting, which allows us to go after meat. I think that's a really good idea. It's going to unlock meat and leathers, uh, which if you noticed earlier, we have them here on our grid. Uh, but we are not really producing mushrooms any longer, except for that little patch over there. And so having a different resource that they can swap over to and another place for us to get meals from, probably a good idea right about now. Uh, water is still looking pretty bad. But I don't know exactly why. I think it's just because it resets the production tracker at the beginning of every morning. Yeah, I, I think that's what happens, is that the produced goods are reset at the beginning of the morning. It doesn't look at, like, the last five days and take an average or something like that. I can see benefits, and I can see negatives to both styles. 
Uh, but let's get this research done real quick because there's not really too much else to do. Research is now a dunzos. That means with our hunting lodge, we can now assign three more people to go out and gather meat. And that means we can also diversify our meals a little bit so that we're not leaning quite so hard on mushrooms. Uh, so I would say it takes four meat to make ten meals, two per hour. Yeah, go ahead and do it, I guess. We're already producing meat, so... It looks like that gets a better output as well, maybe? I don't know. We're producing crazy good meals right now, so I think we'll be all right. And then finally, we need to jump into another technology, and construction of the power grid is the only one that we currently have. The other thing to pay attention to is that you have, like, eras in this game. If you go to this menu right here, basically as your community knowledge increases uh, and your population increases, you move in between eras. So it's basically the same thing as you've seen in like Empire Earth. You go from basically like primitive hunter gathering and like building things out of scrap. And from the screenshots that I've seen of this game much later on in, it seems like you make sort of like a gleaming Gotham sort of styled city that sprawls across the entire map with a carefully planned economy and everything else as you get further on in. And so anyways, that's where we're headed towards right now. For the moment, though, we're producing enough tools. We seem to be getting by. Uh, we're producing enough metal. We seem to be doing well on that front, too. Meat is having a little bit of trouble staying in front of consumption, but that's fine because I see the meat as kind of like a backup stockpile to lean on when the mushrooms run out. Basically, I, I see the meat as a backup resource that we harvest when the mushrooms are running out, not necessarily something that we're going to lean on super heavily. Iron limbs. We need more. Chief, since we can now process metals, you can give us the means to produce durable and effective tools of our own creation so that we can see to our daily tasks. Okay, they want me to get them tools, but we're already set up for that. We're already good to go. And this one, even better, does not have a time limit on it. However, we're about to lose our plus 20 morale, so we're going to lose some production here in just a minute. I would expect there to be fluctuations in our stockpile once this buff falls off, because over the coming days, their morale is going to slowly tick downwards. If we can produce the 50 basic tools fast enough, we may be able to save some of that morale before it fully declines and then has to recharge itself. Because, like, morale in this game is not instantaneous. Like, when you get a plus 20 buff, it doesn't add it. It slowly ticks upwards over, like, the next day or two. And so, anyways, that's kind of where we're trying to keep ourselves for right now. On this side, the stockpile appears to be filling up absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And I think at this junction, we're kind of just waiting... Like, that's pretty much it. We're kind of just waiting for more people to show up. We did finish our objective over here, which is great. Although it's not a large stock, if we can produce and store at such a pace, we can make a habit out of producing at this pace, we sustain our forward momentum. Yeah, so there you go. Another plus 20. And as you can see, just in time, because our morale slipped back down to 40, which has had an effect on our overall outputs. I think we can probably get rid of one of the iron miners off this building. Yeah, we'll still have a 10 surplus per day, just with one worker over there. Be sure to check your outputs, just because, like, some buildings, like, rapidly outpace other buildings. And finding an equilibrium for your population by tuning and kind of, like, micromanaging your workers is a good idea. Like, you can save yourself three or four workers here and there by actually looking at what your ins and outs are doing. And just taking people off of jobs that are basically forcing things up to a top cap. I'm leaving the mushrooms there because they're food. And food is kind of vital to our survival, especially since we're about to be going into winter. But I think we're on wait and see. I think we're on hurry up and wait time right now. I do think we can kind of future proof the power grid. So for like the windmills, we're going to want these to be sort of like out here and like on these little marks. I do think that the marks are in different spots each time you play. Like, I've noticed the food is always kind of in the same spots with this demo. But I kind of feel like, so can't build here, ready to build. Oh, we just need to be in proximity of it? Cool. Okay. So we'll put one in right there. And we will put one in right there. 
and that'll add, I think, like another 100 power for us to play around with. Not really too much for us to do until we get another batch of immigrants. The winter is now officially here. What that means is that production outputs are going to slow from your gathering hut. So, for example, the mushrooms don't grow in the wintertime. That's one reason why I felt it was paramount uh, for us to get the meat harvested before we got to where we are right now and have like an alternate source, basically, of food. Just to top off the stocks, having played through this previously, I tried to make it through the winter with just mushrooms, and I made it through. I still had like 300, 400 meals left by the end, but I'm the kind of person where I like my food and water to basically be at storage cap at all times when I play games like this. So this time around, I wanted to do it a little bit differently. I think after the winter is when the game plans on you going up to the next era. As you can see, our little meter is filling up, so we'll probably just wait for that to happen. All in all, our first winter wasn't that bad. But yeah, having looked at the game now for like an hour and a half, I think there's some fine-tuning to be done with the economies, but they mostly seem to work perfectly fine. Uh, the issue is not underproducing. The issue is overproducing, actually. Uh, some buildings just produce ridiculous amounts of resources with like one worker and other ones do not. And so just kind of learning that curve right there is a good idea. I think that the I think that the actual UI of the game is very, very tasteful. I think it's a really, really good looking UI. And in general, things are where you expect them to be. The only exception there is that it took me a little while to find where I could control my rationing effectively. I think that was the one thing I stubbed my toe on. But things that you may not have noticed, because I've been moving kind of fast here and we've been making a lot of edits, uh, you're going to have advisors at some point, so you're going to have to pick people to actually do various kind of city council jobs. And looks like there's going to be diplomacy. I know that there is a world map. It's on a grayed out button right here, but you need to research the scout team. Like in Frostpunk, you have those hot air balloons that go out and look for things. Uh, this game seems to have kind of that same system planned, uh, where you have scout teams that go out and they scour the world to find things. You create outposts that will then export things back to this location uh, to make the central colony or the capital more powerful, basically. And then another thing I've kind of noticed is that if you tend to, like, build fast like I do, and, like, you know what's coming and you expand very quickly, it's actually pretty easy to outrun this demo right here and just spend a lot of time sitting around, basically. Apparently we're having a dry summer. Oh, yeah, it looks like that's actually messed with our water output. No, our water output's actually the same. A group of foreign people have been detected. Good, that's what we needed. Now, let's go ahead and grab these people. You have to click on the notification down here. It took me a while to find that as well. I would actually suggest making this a bit more obvious. Uh, but basically, if it says a group of foreign people are detected, you have to click in the little text box down here to make this pop up in order to get your new immigrants. Uh, and it's very, very easy to miss. I'll take 13 more people for sure. I don't know how that's going to affect... Hey, we've reached a new era! era, era. Uh, we now have access to taverns, smelters, kilns. Uh, it looks like some kind of, like, maybe clay pit. Uh, it looks like we've got a boot camp, which can upgrade our guys to craftsmen. It looks like we've got tailors, mines, residences, storehouses, lots of upgrades and things to play around with. So that's good. That's really, really good. Let's take a look at the tech tree and figure out what they want us to do here. So for two tool, or for four tools, we can get access to a tavern, uh, which will allow people to be happier. It looks like in our construction map over here, we need paper for the next tier over there. We need paper for all of those tiers. Community, we have the stuff right now for either the technical boot camp or the technical boot camp produces paper. Let's get that started. It looks like it gives us craftsmen, maybe, and it also gives us paper. And so let's see here. Yield decreased in all wells. Agricultural activities are affected. Risk of heat stroke goes up. So there is a chance of illness. Gotcha. I'm no stranger to hot summers. It routinely gets up to like 110, 112 where I live in the summertime. And so you just kind of, you just kind of grit your teeth and bear it. That's called, that's called life. That's called just like dealing with the situation. Let's go ahead and speed this up till our research is done. Although it does look like this one is taking a lot more time to resolve than the previous tier. There we go. Technology's done and our well is officially underproducing. So it looks like it takes a little bit of time before that gets there. Uh, let's see. Resources, well, basic mine, pit. It's not a residence. It's probably an other, maybe? Technical boot camp. There it is. Uh, so this allows us to train people into craftsmen and specialists. From what I understand, though, they are going to need more stuff once we do this. 
So, like, the higher class they are, the more expectation they have of what it is that you can give them. Still, I'd like to see this system in motion, and we've been making a lot of edits and sitting around, like, kind of waiting for things to pass, and so I kind of want to see this second tier. Uh, paper need. We've made rapid progress, Chief. Knowledge will gain more importance after this stage. As a community, we need to better produce and share knowledge into systematic methods. Let's produce paper. Okay, cool. Uh, we should be producing paper fairly shortly. But we need to ride out this summer before things get worse. Our water supply is actually taking a big hit right now. We were almost like... We were, we were at pretty high water just a little bit ago. I think the... Uh, Addition of new immigrants on top of a dry summer. It's definitely taking its toll. That minus 40 or so that we're getting every single day is going to be a worry till the end of the summer. Still, it should be all right. So there's our technical camp. What's up with our technical camp? Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, it costs me paper to do this. Well, I thought this was going to be producing the papeles. I guess not. Fair enough. Oh, it requires electricity as well. Cool. All right, well, let's take a look at our research then and figure out where we can get paper from. Uh, it's probably a paper mill. we got to stink this place up. We can, let's see, sustainability. It looks like we can make clothing, which is pretty cool if we can get paper together. Construction and materials. So structural statics. We need paper for that. We need paper for that. I'm actually not really seeing where we get paper from. But we do have our first advisors, so we can get efficiency for farms. Uh, we can get plus 10 morale for the workforce for gathering jobs. I'll probably do that since we have gathering. And then that'll make tool production go up, so we'll probably hit that as well. I still am not super sure where we get paper from, though. Ah, it's the lumber mill. The lumber mill produces paper. So there you go. The lumber mill can either produce planks or... Or it can produce paper. So it took me a second to find. I didn't think the lumber mill would produce paper. Like a paper mill and a lumber mill are like two different things. And so anyways, I guess it just upgrades your lumber mill to make more paper. So that's good. Uh, we have managed to find that particular resource. However, the downside here is that our lumber is going to do a little bit of a fall off. So it may not be a bad idea in the future to have a secondary lumber mill. Uh, that produces paper, basically. So this one can be free to produce logs, I think. I'd also like to see the ability to set caps on how much they'll craft inside these buildings. So, like, produce paper until we have 500, for example. And you can set, like, a threshold, and then from there, they will swap back to the other job by themselves to, like, limit the amount of micromanagement you have to do. That might be kind of against the spirit of the game, but... It's one of those things that, like, I tend to look for when it comes to quality of life. And maybe it exists somewhere. Like, I know we've got a stockpile menu, and we can set up how much we want to store. But I don't think that'll swap the output back over to... I don't think it'll swap the output back over to wood once it hits it. I don't think. Either way, we've got our paper now, which means that I can start making new buildings. I want to do the Scouts Guild before I go because I want to take a look at what maybe the world map exploration is going to look like. Uh, that feels important. If I wanted to upgrade these houses, how hard is it? So I need to be producing glass, I need to be producing bricks, and I need to be producing wires. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, we got our Scouts Guild done. And so I think the Scouts Guild will probably either be under utilities or other. Yeah, there it is right there. Uh, that leaves me room for a road right there to run in between the gatherer's hut. And so I'm not against that idea right there. So let's get this thing matched out. What is this? Chief, the continuation of our life here must be based on preparedness. They want me to stock 3,000 water and 1,200 meals. That might be difficult. Are we back up to normal production right now? We are. How many days do I have to get that done? Oh, I have infinite time. Well, that's good. We are going to need a secondary well before too long. Water is the one area where I feel like we may be struggling a little bit. And since we can't double dip on this node over here with, like, another well, we're going to have to find another spot to get our water from. Unfortunately, it seems like we're kind of in a tough spot. 
Like, technically, I could put down, like, one crappy well right here just to bear us over until we can get to a better spot that's easier to exploit and has better outputs. I think drips and drabs is better than just sitting around waiting, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Our scout is done. We can create scout teams now. Oh, it's not included in the demo. That's the one thing that I wanted to see before we went. All right, well, I'll probably call it right here then. I wanted to see what the world map gameplay looked like, but I guess it's not in the demo. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day, so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out New Cycle. Sorry I was a little bit late with the upload. The demo was in a weird spot for this game. It was like off in the sidebar, and they upgraded it to a banner in the last day or two. And so I didn't realize the demo was actively out because I didn't look for the little button over on the right. And then I wanted to play enough to where, like, I wouldn't be stumbling over my words and confused about what I was doing. And so anyways, here we are. New cycle. So far looks promising. We'll have to see what the future holds for this game. I've had no technical issues, no frame rate drops, no bugs whatsoever. Uh, it appears to be a very, very polished demo. Uh, but with games like this, you know, these Paradox-style build-a-massive-city games... Sometimes the issue with the overall core gameplay shows up about five or six hours in. And so until we get our hands on like a full copy of the game that has all the mechanics implemented and we can get further on in, kind of tough to comment on, you know, the, the overall quality. But I will say the overall quality of this demo is quite good. Uh, I wish every demo was made to this level of quality. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in and it's time for me to go. Bye, folks.